Hey everybody, welcome to yet another episode of Aches and Gains with Doc and Donnie. I'm Dr. Hayes. Uh, Donnie! What's up, man? What's up? So you got your Penn State shirt on today. This is, because, because we're, talking, we're talking to the younger kids yeah. today. We're talking to the younger kids today, so I am a proud alumnus of the Pencil State. Yeah, you got a, you got a great... Uh, the Pennsylvania State University. Pencil State, yeah. Man, all those, those Buckeye fans. Those Nittany Lions. Just yeah. crap all over me now. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> hey, you uh, guys, Saquon Barkley, man, he's 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 the real deal. Up, no Saquon? doubt about it. What up, so, Saquon? The real deal. I hope you come back safe and healthy. He will. And uh, He's going to come back better than I'm ever. I'm here for you for the late stage rehab. He's going to pull it in. He'd come back and just crush everyone after that knee. So. Dude, that, that guy's, the guy's thighs are incredible. Freaking tree trunks. I'm telling you. And I mean, and, you know, the fact that he has, like, those massive legs and he can jump as high as he can is this is a freak of nature so he's I, a freak uh, I, he has the right attitude yes um, and he has the right work ethic. yeah I mean those I, are this the that's why he is who he is you know? yeah let's just hope that he gets traded from the Giants as soon as possible <laughs> hey, he could be on the Lions <laughs> they're right. career career killers yeah. they're, they're known yeah. for career yeah. killing Hall of Famers careers yeah yeah. Speaking of that, congratulations, Megatron. Hall of Fame. There we go. Yeah. 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 Good on you, man. You've definitely won me a fantasy football title or two. God. So thanks, anybody thanks anybody who's guys. on. Yeah. Like <laughs> just yeah. And then you drafted him and he retired. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wait, no. Oh, there he goes. No, I got a anyway. Marvin Jones senior and <laughs> yeah. junior. Uh, and was, yeah. Anyway. Imagine what Matt Stafford could have done with a real team for the last ten years. Anyway. <laughs> just imagine. Oh, it'll never know. It'll never, yeah. All just right. like, just like rest in peace uh, to Barry's career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God, lions. Anyway, hopefully I have no lions fans. Wait a minute. We don't have lions fans. So. No, we know one. We know one. We know one. That, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that one. Make, yeah, one guy. But you know what sense. he told me? You know what he told me is that he he's now going to root for the Rams this year because because of Stafford. because of Matt Stafford. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. he is a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, he doesn't whatever. have any real loyalty whatsoever. Also a Michigan fan, so I just hope. Oh man, I know we're going on that one. Let's stop. <laughs> right. No more of that. All right. All right. No more Sorry, of that. I thought I was gonna. I'm chill. I was coming into this episode yeah. chill because after the last one, where my head exploded. You want to talk about the the, the number one ninety nine too while we're at it? You know. No, we no, we're done no, with that okay. one. We moved right. on. Okay, we moved on. All right, good. that was last. That was last episode. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> good. I'm chill, man. I'm chill. Yeah. Well, so let's let's move into our uh, our topic yeah. for this. That week. was the fastest that we got into the topic yet. I think so. <laughs> that's All right, I, that's this I, was your topic. You wanted to pick this one. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. intrigued. I was intrigued. Uh, I, th- I thought we covered a decent amount of it in uh, a previous episode about you training, but I think this is a little, you have a little bit of a different take on this one. So well, I'm breaking this one down a little bit more in depth um, and seeing we're in the season right now. Well, what is the topic? You do this all yeah, the time. Yeah, I know. I need to start. I, I know <laughs> what, the topic. What I, is, I know it says it right here, but you still need to tell people <laughs> what is the topic? What are all we right, talking about so, today? Uh, my apologies. Um, <laughs> we're talking about a, a program for a, uh, and I'm going to say high school athlete because I'm going to, I want to specify here. Now this could also be used for a freshman college, whatever, but a high school athlete coming up to an off season. Uh, and how to how to work on being better for the next season, and this is uh, this can be generic to uh, any team sports, um, and hell even some individual sports as well. Um, I, I I tend to work with team sports because I, I like working with basketball, baseball, um, football um, uh, athletes. So here we are. So we're going to talk about. We're talking about high school athletes high school. training in the off season. Yeah, let me get what, to my point. What now. to do, how to do it. Yeah, okay. And we're gonna and I'm actually gonna give you my opinion okay. of what a good uh, program is, um, and break it down in sections so you know how to do it. So, in, you know, the biggest thing I think with high school athletes is lack of guidance. It's 100. percent You have all of this natural hormones running through you. You have you have an most likely an uninjured skeletal muscular skeletal system yeah. uh, that you that you haven't had to deal with trauma yet. Um, but the most most school systems here can't afford somebody who is educated in kinesiology or uh, you know any kind of any kind of um, muscular development. So they take a, a former football player that used to lift weights in the 70s and <laughs> throw him in the weight room. 
And, you know, he's going to tell you, yeah, quarter squat's where it's at. Bench press. All you got to do is bench press. Make sure you do shrugs. Hang cleans, baby. That's all we do is hang cleans. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, unfortunately, they're, they're, being, way. they're being misguided. Um, uh, you know, and I just – so I want to help out that high school athlete that, that, that has the ability to, to be great with some guidance. So, um, yeah, uh, first off, we want to talk about the, the first – what we do is we get off a of season. All right, so you take a week or two when you get off season towards the end of it, just you know, for mental clarity. If you, especially if you're if you're a football, or maybe in baseball when you're dealing with long games, mental clarity. Do what you want to do. Do what you haven't been able to do for the last three, four, five months. You know, within reason. Be safe. But um, <laughs> you know, enjoy yourself. You know, get out there. You, you know, you've sacrificed a lot during a season, especially as a high school athlete. You don't get to do as it's fun stuff that other people do. After school, you're at practice when everybody else is, you know, either working or having fun with their with friends. So do some stuff. All right, take that time. And then when we get into the point where now we want to address any injuries that we've had. So the first week or two in my program here, I'm going to say we address injuries from the season and reacclimation into a program structured gym regimen. Um, so, and that's where I'm going to hand this over to you real quick because your specialty, obviously, is rehabilitation, especially with athletes. So, t- t- tell me how you would take somebody coming off of a football season that they played 10, 12 games, and uh, they're not injured tr- traumatically, but they have a lot of wear and tear, if you will, uh, mm-hmm. over a season. Mm-hmm. So, go ahead. So, uh, I'll get to that in a second. I actually want to address the, the first thing that you kind of touched on, which okay. is, I think is the most important part of all this is to do something for yourself and to um, kind of have like a psychological reset. Um, You know, so one of the things that we have touched, we've not touched on, we had an entire episode about it before, um, is is basically overtraining in in the youth athlete. And uh, and overtraining happens with everyone, but it particularly happens with youth athletes because they don't really know what to do. um, And they're they're trusting an adult to tell them them what to do. So do something different, you know, go uh, just relax, go play a different sport for fun for a little bit, uh, to do something, uh, you know, do something you haven't been doing repetitively over and over and over again for, you know, the last, like you said, three, four, five months. Um, with that said, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I after my seasons of football, um, you know, I would just have everything was like tight and sore and um, I needed something to be done. At the time, back in the 90s, you know, we didn't know what to do. We just kind of like, hey, just, you know, go rest. It'll be fine. Ice uh, it. I, yeah, ice, ice it, <laughs> elevate it. You'll, you'll be, you'll be good, good in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, you know, now we know about things like we've talked about before, active recovery, um, doing some lighter type of, uh, lighter intensity type of workouts, some body weight type of stuff. And so that's essentially what we would start with in the clinic where someone would come in, I'm still going to do kind of my standard functional screens. I'm still going to do my orthopedic tests. I'm still going to assess, you know, joint mobility, you know, soft tissue flexibility. Um, And, you know, these are things that we want to address. So anyone who's in the, Victor, who comes into the physical therapy clinic, the main thing that I want to improve upon and the main thing we can can make the the most immediate um, improvements upon is mobility or lack thereof. Um, So I can do some sort of soft tissue work joint mobilization work to get some range of motion back and that hands-on stuff also helps to calm down any sort of pain and soreness so that's that's basically where we would start and we would focus on that for maybe a a week or two okay so yeah like you said if there is an injury there it's going to create tension in in the muscles and like you said maybe manual manipulation or uh, other methods there loosen it out and that's going to make you feel better just overall yeah less pain um like I said, mobility, you're going to be able to stretch more. And that's, going to, and, and that's going to help you psychologically wrap your mind around, let's start this engine again mm-hmm. and do it all over again. Because mm-hmm. the reality of it is sometimes, even though you enjoy a sport, the, the, the off-field, off-court um, process can be mundane, can be monotonous, and can be grueling to the point where it drives you insane. So if you like, – like I'll say uh, Rob Gronkowski for – when he retired, he said the best thing about it was not waking up Monday in severe pain every day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's part of the sport when you're dealing with a contact sport like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if we can alleviate that for some time and allow you just to feel great. 
I remember having. Like, I remember don't rush having, back into this stuff. I remember having to take the the SAT. They still do the SATs. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I remember. I remember having to take the SAT, and I took the ACT the the day after homecoming uh, in high school, and my like just from the season because I played line, just bashing my hands into like blitzing linebackers over and over again, and I couldn't grip the pencil <laughs> to fill in the bubbles on the scantron, and that was just a regular thing that I dealt with. For you know the entirety of the football season, yep. so yeah, you know undo was, that. Spend yeah. time, undo it. Yeah, you don't have to sacrifice and just suffer through it. From some two older guys that have been through some serious injuries, yeah, that is not normal. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> don't not. get used to the pain. Yeah. You're not, you're not a bigger man or woman uh, because you just tough, tough your way through it. I agree, and I think that's something that we, people overlook all too often, um, and. I'm going to make sure we don't. All yeah. right. So, so we got through the two weeks recovery. Yeah, we're going to start so what's, what's your next? Well, you start acclimating to the gym. Okay. Go in there and just moving stuff again. Because you may not, not some, some may not even be in the gym during a season. If, you, if you're if you're that to a point where you're, you're, um, you know, your games are so close or whatever, you may not even have any gym. So go get yourself acclimated to the gym. Enjoy it again. So get in there and just start messing around. I wouldn't even give somebody a, a strict program at that time. I would just say, hey, go in there. Do some things you know how to do. Don't do anything crazy. Don't do anything that's going to hurt you. Get a pump, you know? Mm -hmm. Do some fun. To enjoy the gym again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, then. We're I gonna like how there's a lot of psychological aspects. It's crazy how this works, huh? Weird. Keeping someone mentally in the game yeah. keeps them physically in the game. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Um, and I'm not even a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we're going to say that's two weeks just for, you know, sake of argument here. I'm basing this off of, of a four-month block here. It can be shorter. It can be longer. Just it, 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 This is my four-month here based off of what a lot of people give for off-season. Um, then you start getting more into uh, on-field drills and this kind of stuff, and you have to, you get less focus on the gym. This is your time when you get focus on the gym to getting stronger, better, and faster. So we're going to take a 10-week period here of the actual training blocks. To me, that's two mesocycles of five weeks. Um, on average, we would do a four-week training block, maybe a deload, just to make sure you're feeling good. You know, go down to 60%. I know some people don't like that word deload, but a, a rest period, an active rest period, where we just drop the percentages. You're, you're still in the gym. You're, you're still, still in the moving gym. weight around. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're still just, doing the movement. You're just not taxing the, the nervous system and the muscles um, as much. You're giving them a reprieve. Um, and then we're going to go back and do another mesocycle, in my opinion, if we're going to go on a, a conjugate style, where we're going to change up some of the exercises. You're still, you're still the same modalities are going to still be. You're still going to squat. You're still going to have pressing. You're still going to have some sort of, of lift from the ground, whether it be deadlift, uh, you know, cleans, whatever. Uh, we're just going to change it up a little bit just to give the, the body a chance to recover on one aspect of it and still be growing on the other. Um, and that's basic conjugate stuff there. We're not, we're, not, we're not reinventing the wheel there. All right, so we do that. Any, any input on that, how we would, how we would uh, cycle that? From, and I'd like for you to look at it from a, a, rehabil a, a prehabilitation standpoint. Hey, let's keep you not injured in the gym during your yeah. offseason. So I think for the first part, for the first mesocycle, this is, this is my – I'll say this opinion. We try. I try to, you know, back stuff up with evidence. But this is more of my opinion, based off of my knowledge of programming and rehabilitation. Is that I want to uh, work on things like endurance um, and and more of muscle maybe hypertrophy in that aspect. Conditioning so the muscle to more conditioning. So I might yeah. not train at as high intensity levels um, for the first mesocycle. For the first mesocycle. Mm -hmm. You know, I you know I, I don't know if that kind of coincides with, with it does. You okay? Yep. All right. So you know that's that that's kind of what I'm thinking. So yes, all the movements I love. I love doing different movements. I I, I love doing um, variations of of traditional movements just to kind of kind of challenge the nervous system. We'll call it that. Um, but doing it at a point where all right, we're going to do higher higher rep sets um, to kind of get. More of that hypertrophy and that and that endurance aspect. I guess the word people use is intensity on that one. We 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 re remove the the heavy weights. Yeah. Add some more intensity, I guess, and yeah, we're, we're intensity ex extending our rep range. Yes. Yeah. 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 But and, yeah. And, and maybe not going 80, 85 percent. We're staying that. Yeah. Maybe the seventy percent range. Yes. And doing yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's we're we're on agreement there. Uh, and then the second mesocycle, maybe we move into more of a a power building phase. Mm -hmm. 
we're still not wanting to. I still don't agree with one rep maxes, except except in a testing phase. But we still want to stay uh, for most of the athletes between even in a power building, three to five reps is the most I w- uh, yeah. the least I would do yeah. as far as that goes. And you know we want to continue. The big, biggest thing for me in here is we want to continue progressing the weight while maintaining the integrity of the lift. Yes. Um, and if you do those, you can stay in that three to five rep range and still do everything great without having mm-hmm. to ever max out at that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So and, and we've, I, and I, we've shown it in the evidence. We have talked about it, the evidence shows before. You can improve one rep max by training at yeah, sub maximal intensities. And, and, and if somebody, if you have a trainer or a coach out there that tells you you can't, please, please tell, inform them because there's enough information out there. It's it's right at your fingertips, and that, there's no excuse for that anymore, uh, in my opinion. So. All right, so we do that. We, we, we create that. And we're doing accessory exercises along with that. And we, we, we want to make sure, hey, even when we program it, make sure we're trying to do ex- accessory exercises that maybe coincide to your sport. You know? It's almost like you're reading my mind. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Man. Uh, so, yeah, that's essentially exactly what I was going to say, is that now that we're in the second mesocycle, we're ramping up to just before uh, the season. Yeah, we want to now make this a little more sports specific yeah for you know my office of linemen I'm, I'm going to do a little more of some cleans you know maybe for my running backs my sprinters i'll do a little more like some romanian deadlifts some single leg deadlifts to work on Tied up the hamstring to forward, work on yep. eccentric hamstring control mm-hmm. for that sprinting that they have to do um this would also be from my perspective where i would want to work um a lot on the accessory stuff a lot on my areas of weakness Okay. So, and almost like the two for injury prevention. So yeah, if I'm yeah, someone absolutely. who like with my testing that we've done or your, or your screening that you've done, you find, all right, well, for some reason, like you have weak quads. We need to do like, a little more quad dominant type of yeah. stuff. Throw some you know, it, squats in there. We'll yeah. do some other things that are. Exactly. Yeah. For some reason, like you're, you're a pitcher and even though we've done a lot, you know, some sort of like overhead stuff or some pulling, um, you still have some rotator cuff weakness. Well, we're going to do like a good old fashioned, like, rotator cuff strengthening program as your accessory work on top of yep. the strength training that you're, that you're going to do. Um, so you know, that's, that's where I would uh, prefer that type of stuff to be, to be thrown in um, as accessory work. Okay. No, and that's, that's great because you're right because that's going to move us into our next, my next transition here is we're going to be working on, okay, we want to test. You know, uh, I'm not, like I said, you don't have, I'm going to say it again, you don't have to hit a one rep to know where you're strong is if your coach and you feel you are, you're, the integrity of your form is safe enough for you to max out and you want to see true uh, uh, undeniable progress by doing a max effort, go for it. As long as both of you under supervision feel that it's, it's, it's safe because the last thing you want to do is hurt yourself in the gym. If you as a trainer or a coach sitting here, if you get an athlete hurt in the gym, you are wrong. And unless there's a freak accident happen, your job is to keep them you, healthy. You to stay miss, on the you field. miss something. You miss something, yeah. and and not, not every time. It's but okay, I, like, well, which, again, I sorry, I, I hate to throw that out there every time, but yeah, you know, I listen. Freaking, I don't, happen. I, I don't, I don't catch everything the first time that I evaluate someone either. Uh, I mean, I try to I, you know, do as good of a job as I can, but you know, it's people are going to miss things. But if it happens, you know, multiple times to multiple players or repetitively to the same person, something, yeah. something has been missed. So, sorry. yeah, no, yeah. I agree. And especially like, if you have, you see like, some of the teams, professional teams, all of a sudden, like a whole bunch of Tommy John surgeries in one year. Whoa, what's well, going on? Let's look at this. Yeah. Could it be a coincidence? Yeah. Of course, in the realm yeah. of possibility, could. My like three, four, five hitters all had oblique strains. Yep. <laughs> the probability is there's something going on somewhere that somebody's missed or they're mm-hmm. improperly training. Mm-hmm. So just keep that in mind. Um, so you don't, to go back to my point, you don't need to max out the test, but you can. And I encourage you, if you feel like you're, you, you had a great uh, uh, training blocks and you want to test where you're at just to give you some measurables for the years and coming up, especially if you're trying to be, you know, going to collegiate, you need some sort of measurables to hand to these recruiters. Yeah. There you go. Look at this. Over mm-hmm. the last three years, I've increased X, X, this, doing mm-hmm. this. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. You know, that's great to have. All right, so then we do that. Um, I also, so like in terms, going back to like doing the test week, I, I listen, uh, your form's not going to be perfect, uh, you know. So, like, if your form isn't sloppy a whole time leading up to that, maybe maybe you're not appropriate for for, yeah. for, for one rep max test week. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
form's been good. You've been hitting numbers. There's nothing, nothing that seems to be dragging. I think it's a great psychological thing. To, victories. To, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Victories. You know, you like you know, those video those scenes. You see like videos where you got all your teammates around you. You got like five plates on there. You're mm-hmm. squatting. You're hitting. You're, you're hitting one like run max and brings everybody together and yeah. it gets you pumps up. Um, I, I think that psychologically, it's got a more more of a benefit than like more than physiologically. Yeah, and form's gonna break down when you get to 100 percent anyway. So yeah. it's, it's just the the level of breakdown we yeah. want to minimize. We yeah. don't want we're doing a deadlift. We don't want a full cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just over there. All right, so. Uh, finally, we move on in, in in my little block that I've created here. And keep in mind, this is just my stuff. This isn't the end all be all. This isn't gospel. This is just what I'm recommending. Um, well, you are a strength coach. I am a strength coach, but I always so. say there, I'm not. I, I never consider myself an expert. I'm constantly a student of the well, game. Yeah. And and this well, is the stuff that anyone, I've learned. If anyone has got some level of authority to to put together a program, <laughs> I would hope it would be you. All right. So otherwise, I need to leave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, we don't. We'll talk about this later. <laughs> no, just kidding. I I do consider myself a, a good coach. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, so we, we, what I like to add on is this thing, and some people don't do is it's a, a three-week sports-specific acclimation time. Mm-hmm. All right, so now we're going to – What does getting, that mean? We're getting closer to our time when the coaches are saying, all right, we're going to start having some practices. We're going to start having some get-togethers and stuff. So now we want to take the, the, practic- the, the, the strength, the speed uh, that we have uh, gained, hopefully – in our in our in our strength training block here in the off season, and try to apply it to our specific sport, and not even that specific specific uh, position in sports. So if you're a pitcher, we're going to do that kind of stuff versus a, a hitter or a fielder, and in football, if we're a lineman versus a, like you said, a, a cornerback or a receiver, we're going to pick exercises that um, demonstrate the ability to to um, emulate the the movements on the field. Okay, so, uh, and we're going to do that for three weeks. Now, I don't believe we should do those close to maximum effort. I think they should be more in a, a real world aspect. So we're doing higher reps. We're going we're gonna to say, okay, in football, you have 40 seconds in between each snaps. Okay, let's work on getting, like, doing these exercises. Short breaks, back to it. Mm-hmm. Short breaks, back to it. Short breaks, back to it. If we're in baseball, everything is sprint, stop. Sprint, stop. So we're doing a lot of sprint work the kind of, or uh, in, interval work, that kind of stuff. Uh, in, for alignment, we're doing tire flips. We're doing this kind of stuff where we're working on coming off of that three-point stance up into, up into the line. We're mm-hmm. doing those types of exercises uh, for that three weeks, moving into the season. And as we're doing that, we kind of want to taper off, in my opinion, the weights and then add in more intensity, like you talked about in the beginning. <clears throat> because in a game, the, the, the intensity of the reps and this kind of stuff and the, the shorter rest periods are going to be key. Uh, for performing at a high level at your sport. So we start doing that. We start, okay, the weights are going a little bit further away. Reps are coming back in. Sets are coming back in. Rest periods are dropping. That kind of thing. So. I'm, good, I'm good with that. I mean, you know, once you get to the season, hopefully you are still lifting. It's, hopefully. We talked yeah, about this some before. Aspect. We talked about this before, lifting in season. You should, you should still be lifting in season because then when we get in season, that's what we're doing. Like, I'm only been doing a couple of days a week. And, but, and I'm doing, like, sets of, like, three to five mm-hmm. so at a relatively high uh, one rep max percentage. And I'm not doing that much. I'm just kind of practicing the movement, it, doing it at a, at a high enough weight because it needs something that, it's, that I need to do and tolerate for the sport that I'm playing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm really just trying to kind of recover from the sport that I'm playing and maintain throughout the season. I think so. the, the, the word I missed and I should have put in there for that last three box is, is conditioning the body for another season coming up. That's yeah. probably okay. the word, how I should have put it. We're conditioning uh, using strength training methods of the body because inevitably whenever you show up to a training camp or anything, they're going to they're gonna PT the crap out of you. They're going to mm-hmm. they're gonna just beat you con- to check your conditioning. So you're going to get plenty of, of traditional cardiovascular conditioning for most programs. Yeah. Um, this is training the body to get back into the movements that you need to perform for that next four or five months or whatever. So that's my uh, four-month block there, or my, my, my 16-week block. Um, feel free to give me some advice on it. what you think, if it's good. Feel free to use it. Um, you know, I, I've used it on other athletes. I, I've used it um, plenty of times, and I've had pretty good success with it. You know, you, you, you have a short period of time, so we're not going to increase somebody's squat by 100 pounds, but that's not the goal. No. What I'm trying <laughs> to do is keep this person on the field all games for the next season, yeah. performing at a slightly higher level. Yeah. Or, you know, that's the goal. If they perform at a high, higher level without getting injured, you as a strength coach, pat yourself on the back. You've done a great job. That's, that's it. Mission accomplished. Yep. Put that up there. 
Yeah. On an aircraft. Not like George, <laughs> not George W. Bush style, yeah, but. I was going to say, on an aircraft. Mm. You know? Okay. No, no. Okay. Let's, let's <laughs> stay away from that one. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, speaking, speaking of pictures. What you got? We're going we're gonna to go into everyone's favorite part of the show. Bro science myths. Myths, myths, myths. Oh, let's go on. See ya. <laughs> See ya. Or pet peeves. Hey, I don't know. We do a lot of pet peeves recently. I know. I got, that's fine. That's fine. I got I got another. I mean, our, our one of our most recent episodes was essentially all bro science. So it's fine. Mm-hmm. So pet peeve, Donnie. How many how many gym selfies do you take per per workout? Per session? Yeah. Um, well, it depends on how 12, many how many sets of curls I'm doing that day. Thirty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we gotta make sure you get the right lighting. Um, <laughs> or if there's like an attractive female in the background, make sure you hit that. You get two for one. Uh, no, Wait, I'm just kidding. Said, I can't stand that stuff for the most part. Um, uh, and that's why I avoid certain gyms that maybe start with, uh, a, a, you know, an L or an A um, <laughs> that <laughs> that uh, um, have that. So, yeah, no, that powerhouse starts with a P. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak for them, actually. I don't go to them very often. But, yeah, uh, there's another one that starts with an L, my bad, that, uh, that uh, yeah, just it's, it's just filled with them. Like, I don't know what yeah. they would do without the mirrors. I mean, what do they do before cell phones? I don't, I Did they, don't like, know. call their friends over? Hey, look yeah. at me. Yeah, yeah. You know? Get, take, get out your Polaroid. Yeah. <laughs> so, I can, <laughs> so I can put this on my dream board. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I'm all for measuring progress, especially for, you know, your bodybuilders, uh, your yeah, fitness competitors. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, it's great. Show us your progress. Just don't do it in the middle of the freaking gym when I'm trying to actually do something to make myself better and stronger, and you're over here putting together your paper muscles. So I, I don't, like, it's it's really... There's one cable machine, and you're in yeah, the middle of it yeah, doing a selfie. Ex- exa- you know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because, you know, what happens is the only places there are mirrors are places where I actually need to see myself and, cor- and check my technique for my lift to make sure that I'm not doing something inappropriate. Uh, and, and that's where you happen to be standing. <laughs> not happen to be. That's on purpose, my yeah. friend. Okay, all right. Because that's, that's where the best lighting is. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. So, yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, this is this is old hat maybe. Maybe uh, we're yeah. a bunch of, you know, uh, old white dudes who are complaining about the, about the kids these days. <laughs> but get, yeah. I'm trying to lift. Get out of my way. Just move. Go yeah, maybe somewhere it's else. Old guys, we know we only have so much time to lift anymore. We're getting yeah, old. Yeah, like, exactly. Get out of my way. I yeah, want to do yeah. this. <laughs> 22 year olds, like, I could do this forever. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like, exactly. I'm, I maybe only have three more years of this shit, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. Whatever. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, we know you're at the gym. Everyone knows you're at the gym. You checked you, in already. You, yeah, you, <laughs> checked, you checked in. You posted, you tagged them on, yeah. you tagged them on whatever it is that the kids are using these Hell, days. you made a post earlier this morning that you were going to the gym tonight. Yeah. Yeah, we know, man. Yeah, we we ever every. And I knows. love that you're going to the gym. Yes. Keep going to the gym, man. Don't stop. Yeah, don't stop. Just stop taking pictures while I'm trying to, you know, perfect my snatch or my <laughs> overhead squat. Like, you well, know, do it like the rest of us do it, quietly in the bathroom so nobody sees you. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're talking about still selfies, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Are we? <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Have some shame, my yeah. friend. Yeah. No, you I'm look, kidding. trust me, we, we all know you look great. You look great. The entire town knows you look great. Yep. You can bring in the all, all of the news team, and they all know you look yeah. great, too. The hot chick staring at you. We get it, yeah. Yeah. Well, she probably thinks you're an idiot, but just stop. No, just stop. At you. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. So... On that note, where can they find your your Instagram selfies? Where my gym, where we have actually, ironically, a bunch of mirrors. <laughs> that has horrible lighting, though. I got to work on that. Um, <laughs> Strength and Performance Institute, right here in sunny Clearwater, Florida. Actually, it's not too sunny today, but um, yeah, ironically. But yeah, uh, then Instagram. That's at Facebook.com, by the way, Strength and Performance Institute. You want to start over? And then no, and then Instagram.com <laughs> slash Donnie Kieran, and that's where you'll see my. Uh, heavily filtered uh, lighting at, uh, selfies of myself where I love myself because every once in a while I see the right lights. I'm like, ooh, that looks good. So, yeah, look at that, you know. And I look, you know, to my, I will say myself, I look pretty big. Go ahead. I mean, you do. You yeah, do. Thanks, I, I, I am almost all 220, and I look like a <laughs> shrimp next to you. So uh, you can find me, Dr. Hayes Estes, the owner of Premier Physical Therapy. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. Uh, Facebook, PT, whatever. PT and Sports Therapy. I don't know. you find it. You'll find <laughs> it. We're also on Instagram at run Tampa Bay. Hey, by the way, 
Uh, if you liked this or any episode of ours, we would love for you to become a subscriber. We would love for you to like it. We it's would love free. for you to share it. We do this out of the goodness of our hearts. And uh, I take time away from my family to come here and be with this guy. And um, they would like for me to come home. And my family tells me to come here and spend time <laughs> with this guy. So it's uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So please do that. All right. Hey, That's all I got. We enjoy this. We love it. We'll see you next time. Wait a second. Hang on. Let's... What you got? Got to do a selfie. Oh, we got, oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna do one, right? Hang on. Oh, this, wait, turn it around. Oh, man, I'm so old. Here we go. Oh yeah, you can see it through the hoodie. Here it is. We out. <laughs> you good? Whenever you're ready, my friend. Let's finish strong. I feel like I'm laid back now. No, it's, it's good, chill. man. That's good. That's I'm cool. Busted Different. out all my energy. <laughs> Different right. vibes, man. Different, be like... Different vibes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could do this for a living. This is so <laughs> fun. Uh, if we get oh. if we get above 27 subscribers, maybe. <laughs> if we can get like 27 million more. Yeah. Actually, no. We only have 270 million more. Yeah. 270,000 oh, more. Fine. Yeah, we're, we all, we're, like, we're pretty much oh, there. Oh, this is great. <laughs> oh, man. That was a good That was a fun yeah. time. I had a blast. That was the most fun I've had with my pants on all week. <laughs>